Let's look at the center of mass of a solid. We've seen that if the density at the point xy of a lamina, a thin metal sheet covering the region R, is delta of xy, that's the density, the center of mass is x bar y bar, where x bar is 1 over m times the double integral over R, x delta of xy. And y bar is 1 over m double integral of R well, over R of y delta of xy. This is, again, where m equals the mass. Similarly, if the density of the point xyz of a solid T is delta of xyz, the center of mass is x bar y bar z bar, where x bar is 1 over m times the triple integral of x delta of xyz dz dy dx. y bar is 1 over m times the triple integral of y delta of xyz, and z bar is 1 over m times the triple integral of z delta of xyz. So notice these formulas are virtually identical to the formulas we saw earlier. These are double integrals, and these are triple integrals. Find the center of mass of the solid bounded by the planes x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 0, and x plus y plus z equals 1, if the density of the solid at the point x, y, z is x. We've seen this solid before. Looks like this. This is a plane x plus y plus z equals 1. We saw the solid earlier. The mass is the triple integral of the density, delta of x, y, z, dz, dy, dx. In this case, z goes from the bottom, which is 0, to the top. z equals 1 minus x minus y. And these are the limits of integration on x and y. y goes from 0 to 1 minus x. x goes from 0 to 1. When we evaluate this integral, we get 1 24th. We've seen that before. The center of mass is x bar, y bar, z bar, where, again, x bar is 1 over m times the triple integral of x, delta of x, y, z. Well, we saw a moment ago that m is 1 24th. And these are the same limits of integration we just had a moment ago when we calculated the mass. Now, x times delta of x, y, z, since delta, the density, is x, x times x is x squared. Okay, so when we evaluate this integral, uh, we're going to get 1 60th and 1 over 1 24th. That's just going to be 24. So we end up with 24 times 1 60th, which is 2 fifths. In the same way, y bar is 1 over m times the triple integral of y, delta of x, y, z. m is 1 24th, so we have 1 over 1 24th, same limits of integration. y times delta is going to be y times x. 1 over 1 24th is 24, uh, and this integral turns out to be 1 20th, 1 over 1 20th, I should say. And so we have 24 divided by 1 20th, which is 1 5th. And z turns out to be the same way. 1 over m, triple integral of z, delta of x, y, z, dz, dy, dx. So 1 over 1 24th is 24, and this integral turns out to be 1 over 1 20, in other words, a fifth. Okay, so the center of mass of this object is x bar, y bar, z bar equals 2 fifths, 1 fifth, 1 fifth. And that makes sense, because the density is x. So that means that the bigger x is, the heavier it gets. So it seems reasonable that it would not be symmetric, uh, namely that the, the center of mass would be skewed towards x. Because again, the heavier x is, you know, the bigger x is the heavier heavier the object. Here's some cool applications of the center of mass. We can use it to simplify calculations in astronomy that involve gravity. Because, for example, if you have the Earth and the Moon not drawn to scale, the calculations involved in the movement would be incredibly complicated because this part of the Earth attracts this part of the Moon, it also attracts this part of the Moon and this part of the Moon, and this part of the Earth attracts this part of the Moon and this part of the Moon, and oh my goodness, every particle on Earth attracting every particle on the Moon, it would be incredibly complicated. All we have to do is reduce everything to the center. Okay, the center of mass or the center of gravity, the centroid. So once we do that, all you have to do is compute the movement of those two. Of, of those two. Okay, another cool application, SUVs and Jeeps are more likely to roll over because of their high center of gravity. That's why some of them sport this sticker that you can get on Amazon.com. And here's the website if you want to buy that. I'm not selling them. Another cool application, the movement of a, of a baton twirling in the air looks wild, but the center of mass follows the parabolic path. So for example, if you toss a baton, if you could light up the center of the baton, it would look like this, okay? Even though, you know, even though the, the baton's doing all sorts of wild and whirly things as it twirls through the air. Is there a way that you can stack dominoes or books or DVD cases at the edge of a table so that the top one extends completely beyond the edge of the table? Yes! 
Yes, you can. And here I am. So here are some Wii cases. Notice that this top one is completely over the air. It's not even over the table. It's completely over the air. And you can tell because I've got this, I've got this ruler here, this, um, this level. And by the way, this is just all sorts of junk in the background that I didn't want you to see because we're cleaning out our basement and it's, it's pretty gross back there. Okay, the center of mass of the entire stack needs to be above the table. And the center of mass of each one needs to be above the one underneath. So in this case, the center of mass of the entire stack, if you were to analyze it, would be above the table. It would just be just barely. So the center of mass of that might be right over here. And the center of mass of each one needs to be above the, uh, the one below. Because, of course, you can't have this one, two-thirds of this one sticking out over here, and just one-third of it uh, sticking out over the, the one below it. That's not going to work out. 